In this video, we're going to talk about how I color grade my videos to look like film. Now, I've been color grading and editing videos for almost four years now. And honestly, I've never found the right tool to get that exact film look until now. You see, the whole time I've been color grading, I've been going about it the regular way. You get your transformation LUT, you transform your log footage into Rec. 709, then you apply some kind of look LUT from your favorite creators or maybe one that you've created yourself, and then you adjust your curves and things like that until you get a pleasing image. Maybe you'll add halation or bloom, but again, those are separate plugins that you usually have to buy. So finally, I have started using Dehancer Pro to emulate the look of film. And before you click away, trust me and watch me grade one of these clips and you're going to be absolutely blown away by what this plugin can do. The plugin is available for DaVinci, Final Cut, Adobe, and they even have an app for your phone now if you're a mobile creator or a mobile editor, which I'll touch on at the end, but it's also capable of doing everything the plugin can do on your computer. Obviously, I edit on my computer, so that's how I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, so let me show you my workflow for how I use Dehancer to color grade my videos to make them look like film. Now, the first step is very simple. You just simply apply your plugin to the clip. Now, you might freak out initially, but that's because some things are enabled by default. So we're just going to go ahead and turn everything off here okay awesome there we go now at the very top you have the built-in ability to transform your footage from log to rec 709 and you're actually able to choose exactly what camera you shot this on so this was shot on a not dji this was shot on a canon r5c in cinema log 3 gamut okay awesome so right away we have a pretty good transformation now right here once you're done with the transformation you can go ahead and adjust the exposure comp temperature fix all those things right away i'm just gonna leave this all the way it is right now uh even the exposure i'll leave at zero i like to come back to this once i've done some other adjustments now the first adjustment that we're gonna do is we're gonna pick our type of film profile now my favorites are kodak portrait 800 400 and kodak gold 200 those are the type of films that i like uh so we're gonna start off with kodak gold 200 that's the one i'm gonna be using I'm going to hit that and I'm going to hit enable. So right away, it applies Kodak Gold 200. Now this push pull EV down here, you can make the film warmer or cooler. We're just going to leave this on zero to begin with. Now, right after I apply the film, I scroll down, I skip a bunch of steps and I go into my print. So this is what, where the, uh, you can pick what kind of print you want your film to be on. So I like Kodak Endura glossy paper, and I also like the Fujifilm 3513 print film. For this one, we're gonna go ahead and use the Kodak Endura glossy paper. That's the one that I've been using for almost everything. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that, and we're gonna go ahead and enable that, and right away, you have a massive shift in your colors. Now, sticking in the same box, we're also gonna go ahead and enable the analog range limiter. So if you go ahead and you watch the video scopes on the left, when I enable this, it really compresses down the contrast on the image and makes it look more like film, which is what we want. So I always go ahead and turn this on. Now for our next step, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Film Developer and Film Compression. And I'm gonna turn on Film Compression. And if you look at the video scopes on the left again, it does a hard cut on the highlights to remove all of that harshness. So I always turn that on. And then I also turn on Film Developer and you're gonna see why, because I make a lot of adjustments in here. Now inside of Film Developer and probably my favorite slider in the entire entire Dehancer plugin is the color boost and I always turn the color boost up and you're going to see that the colors start looking really really good when I start doing this and this is generally where I get that nice pop of color from just playing around with it so I'll leave it at around 70 for this image and I think that'll make me pretty happy now next up we're going to do some exposure adjustments so what I do next is I come down under expand and I enable this and if I want to soften up my blacks this is where I can do this by adjusting the black point so I'm going to drag back the black point to around minus two and then just playing around with the white point, probably going to bring that upwards because again, I want it to be a little bit softer at around 110 and I'm pretty happy with that. Now that we have most of our image dialed, we can go ahead and we can settle on the tone. So what I do for that is that I come back up here to our film and now that I have most of the colors dialed, I want this to be a little bit warmer. There's a little bit of coolness in the shoes and in the sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and push Kodak Gold 200 
towards the warmer side all the way up to like 1.4 and if I turn this on and off, you can see how much work that film is doing and I'm pretty happy with that. Next up, I'm going to come down into color head and you can make a lot of adjustments in here to the tone of your image. Now, essentially, this is just like your color curves. It's just a lot simpler to understand if you don't know how those work. So I'm going to start off by enabling this. Um, then I'm going to go into the reds and cyans and I'm going to push this out a little bit to take out some of the reds. So just minus two very slightly. And then on the yellow blue slider, I definitely want to push in some yellow. So I'm going to come down to about minus eight. I'm going to push up onto the away from the green, actually into magenta around minus three. Now, if you come down into the tone range, you can just play around with this and see what it does. So this pushes the shadows to be cooler or warmer. Um, for this particular image, I'm going to go warmer on the shadows at around 40. I think that makes me happy. And then same thing with the midtones. Uh, this I'm actually just going to leave at zero. And then same thing with the highlights. You can see how it's working. Uh, even for the highlight tones, I think I'm going to push this out to like about, about 40. Yeah, there we go. And then if I disable and enable the color head, you can see how much more work it's doing to help warm up this image. Now, a couple of finishing touches that really help sell that film look. So what I do is I come down here and I activate halation and I also activate bloom. Now, right away, this does a huge difference to the image, especially the bloom. Now, if you want, you can go into custom and you can play around with this. Um, if you want the impact to be less, you can definitely bring that down or even bring it up. Uh, me personally, I'm okay with the 35 millimeter super 35 default look that they have. And I turn on the bloom and the halation and that's it. That is our full grade for this specific image. So if I scroll all the way to the top and I turn off dehancer, this is where we started. And if I turn it back on, this is where we ended. I think the image looks phenomenal and it really does look like film. Now, just to show you how easily and quickly transferable some of these grades are, if I come down to my next scene, which is completely ungraded and was also shot on the same Canon R5C, exact same settings in the same room, just a different perspective. If I go ahead and I hit Command C to copy my grade and then I hit Command Shift V to bring up pasting the attribute. This will be different in whatever video editor you're in, but I paste my settings from Dehancer Pro. You can see that I've copied the grade over and I didn't do any work and all of my settings are applied. Now, if I want to change something, I can definitely go in and I can pick a different print and change this around depending on like what kind of look that I'm going for. But I am very happy with the look that Kodak Gold 200 is going and I'm happy with all of the contrast adjustments that I made because the scene was exactly the same. This works out really well for me. This won't always work out, but in this scenario, I'm really happy with how this grade looks and I would easily transfer this over without doing any extra work. And finally, we come to our nighttime scene. So just to start things off, I'm going to paste over the same grade that I just did on the other scenes and I'm going to apply it. Now, obviously this makes it really dark. Uh, because the environment is not the same. So instead of starting the grade completely from scratch, what I like to do is I actually like to go in and I like to adjust the settings that I've already made. So I know that Kodak Gold 200 is not the best film to pick for nighttime. So I'm actually going to go ahead and switch this to Kodak Portra 800. Right away, we get back a lot of the detail, which is nice to see. Now, sticking in that same area, I know that I've warmed this up way too much. So I'm going to go ahead and zero on this to bring back some of the warmness and make it more realistic to nighttime. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down into my expand section and I want to change the black point to be a little bit lower just so I get some more details back in those shadows. So around minus seven here works for me, but this is something that you're going to have to play around with as we make it further down the line. So if I come down to my print and I try and push the exposure up a little bit to just increase the exposure, keeping an eye on my video scopes and then increasing the tonal contrast here a little bit just to make sure that there's not too much noise in my shadows. I get an image that I'm pretty happy with. Now, the final change I want to make is under my color head. I want to show you guys this feature that I really like, and it's called the gang feature. Essentially, what this does is that it combines all of your curves into one so you can move them together. And I know that I want to go away from magenta in this scene. So if I push against the magenta, you're going to notice that all of the color curves are moving together and it'll get me to a tone that I'm really happy with. And now I can just clean this up by adding a little bit of warmth underneath the temperature comp. So if I push this to the right, 
Um, and just like that, I get an image that I'm really happy with. So if I turn on Dehancer Pro and I turn it back on, you can see what a wonderful job is doing of making this video look like film. And again, all I did was just copy over my previous grade and make some tweaks for the specific scene. So once you get a look that you're happy with or you create your own LUT, all you have to do is just make some minor modifications and you can really use that for every single scene that you work on, speeding up your color grade flow like crazy. And that's it. That's my review of Dehancer Pro and my whole color grading workflow to make my videos look like film. And I'm not just saying this, but this is going to be my color grading workflow moving forward for the foreseeable future. It's so easy to convert. It's so easy to make the exact adjustments that I want. And I get the actual look of my favorite films, which is what I've really been looking for this whole time. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'm going to have a link below in the description for you to go check out Dehancer Pro. It's not a free app, but I think it's definitely worth it. Now, I also did mention at the beginning of this video that they have a new app. And if you're a mobile creator, this is great because every single setting that I showed you is also available on the mobile app. So definitely check that out if you're more of a mobile editor. But that's it for this video, though. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, keep creating.